Daughter of Smoke and Bone, 2011, is a fantasy novel by author Lainey Taylor. The narrative follows 17-year-old Carew through a fantastical war between angels and demons. It was as New York Times bestseller and received a good deal of critical praise. It was a finalist for the Andre Norton Award, which is one of the top honors for fantasy writing. The sequels include Days of Blood and Starlight, 2012, and Dreams of Gods and Monster, 2014. Its themes include love across the ages, the meaning of betrayal, and false memories. Carew, an art student, lives in Prague, in the Czech Republic. She has bright blue hair, memorable tattoos, and a great talent for martial arts. She likes to explore the city with her best friend, Zuzana. She has typical boyfriend problems and trouble getting all her schoolwork in on time. But at night, she's a messenger for Brimstone, an ancient wizard demon with a ram's head and the body of a dragon. She herself is a demi-demon. Brimstone is Karu's father figure, and out of a sense of familial duty, she's happy to travel through magical portals around the world to steal human teeth and return them to her father. He rewards her with tiny objects that can grant her various wishes. After a while though, the work starts to bore Karu. She dislikes dealing with gamblers and grave robbers. For the past 17 years, Karu has been raised by three other chimera, mystical creatures whose bodies are made up of different parts of humans and animals. They live in a place called Eretz, that Karu visits only on occasion, her guardians have forbidden her from exploring the land of Eretz. One day, Karu finds that all of the magical portals have been locked and scorched beyond recognition, the handlebar also has a black handprint on it. The locked doors mean that Karu cannot return to Brimstone and the other Chimera who raised her. She learns that Akiva, an obscenely beautiful man with giant angel wings, is responsible for locking the doors. He tries to kill her with his sword, but Karu manages to escape through a secret door. The door leads her to Eretz, and soon enough she runs into Brimstone. But instead of being happy to see his daughter, Brimstone is furious that Karu has ventured this far into Eretz. He sends her back to Earth and destroys the door through which she gained entry into Eretz. Back on Earth, Karu wastes no time in looking for ways to return to Eretz and see her family again. But all the usual portals have been scorched and have a black handprint on the handle, meaning that a seraphim like Akiva, or his brother and sister, Hazael and Liraz has destroyed the portal. Karu uses one of her wishes to gain the power of flight. She travels to Marrakesh, in Morocco, to make a deal with a fallen angel, Razgut, who can take her to Eretz. Before setting out on that journey, she acts as a good friend to Zuzana by flying to her puppet show. There, unexpectedly, Karu is confronted by Akiva. She beats him in combat and drags him to her apartment for interrogation. Upon seeing Karu's wishbone necklace, Akiva declares that he knows who Karu really is. He doesn't immediately tell her about her secret lineage, but he promises to stop trying to kill her. Through a series of flashbacks, the reader learns that Akiva has been part of a 1,000-year war between Seraphim and Chimera. The Chimera, led by Brimstone, were collecting human teeth to bring one of the Chimera who had been killed back to life. In a shocking twist, it turns out that Karu is one of those reincarnated Chimeras who died in a previous battle. She was formerly called Madrigal Kirin and had a love affair with Akiva, despite the fact that she was a devil and he was an angel. As punishment for her betrayal, the Chimera executed her. Akiva helps Karo regain the memories of her past life by breaking the wishbone necklace. Suddenly, Karu remembers everything. In vivid detail, she sees herself as a full Chimera, she had a human torso and head, but deer legs, bat wings, and a sizable horn. She encountered a wounded Akiva on the battlefield, something about him moved her to pity, and instead of killing him, she tended to his wounds and helped him heal. Sadly, Karu also learns that in his effort to end the epic war between Seraphim and Chimera, Akiva successfully burned all of the portals to Eretz, so that no more teeth could be taken back to the battlefield to reanimate fallen Chimera. He also murdered all of Karu's family. Karu is torn, she is devastated that her family is dead but she also loves Akiva. She considers killing Akiva Biu instead, she journeys back to Morocco to find Razgut. Along with Akiva, they journey back to Eretz to begin a new life in her old home. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.